the only way you can hedge that is with your ego because there's no way you can stay up with it. First of all, the XIV failed because it was built to fail. Yeah. Um, honest to God, uh, Tony, that was the dumbest product. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and to be blunt. Yeah, yeah, I agree. You know, I'm Credit Suisse and the rest of the guys that put that thing together. Um, so I, I, I mentioned this to uh, a friend, Nancy Davis, over at Quadratic. Mm. And I said, Nancy, when we saw this thing, I said then, and I continued to say through the meltdown of it, when it went to from 99 or wherever it was to basically six yeah. in one day, <laughs> you know, when it lost, you know, 90 some odd percent of its value. Um, I said, the only way you can hedge that is with your ego because there's no way you can stay up with it. No way possible you could stay up with it. I'm, I'm not against leveraged ETFs. I know this was an ETN, an exchange traded note, mm -hmm. but I'm not against leverage with ETFs or ETNs. But something like this, that's a derivative of a derivative of a derivative. What could go um, wrong? Yeah, yeah, exactly. What could go wrong? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, crazy, stupid stuff. So will there be more like that? There'll be more moves yeah. like February of 2018, yep. I think. Um, we saw one in December. Yep. It was about as ugly as I can remember going back to the 2008-2009 debacle. Totally. But we'll see more. Uh, quite frankly, we'll see more because what Pete mentioned about combination of artificial intelligence or AI and uh, high frequency trading. And it's, again, I'm not demonizing them, but uh, I would say that uh, at a very minimum, the SEC and FINRA should be fighting for putting the uptick rule back in. Right. Because the uptick rule worked for you know, whatever, 80 years yeah. from the time they put it in. Yeah. And then when they repealed it, they said, well, more or less with 40 disparate different markets, how do you know what the last uptick was? The same computers that make high frequency trading possible, make it possible to know you can't sell on that because it's right. That's a, a lower tick, tick right. than yeah. the last traded price. So you can't sell there if you don't own it. Yeah. If you own it, you can get out anytime you want. If you don't own it, you can't. Uh, just pound it into the ground. But right. like I say, when you've got artificial intelligence and algorithms that are built to, okay, every time I get hit on the bid, lower my bid and lower the quantity on my bid. Mm -hmm. So what am I doing? I'm withdrawing liquidity, liquidity. liquidity on the side that needs it right. instead of adding, I'm, right. I'm pulling back. Right. When you were a market maker, you got special margins and all the rest for being there and guaranteeing that you would uh, make a market as the market was falling apart. Might not be a great market, but you're guaranteeing to be there. Otherwise, they'll take that uh, market maker designation away. Right. We don't have that anymore. And they could do go a long way towards dealing with it, putting the uptick rule back in. And I for think securities. that's the biggest problem is the fact yeah. that, that we, we have allowed this to occur where, you know, I catch a lot of flack, so does John, because we bring this up a lot. The uptick rule being one, and the, the algorithms are not market makers. Right. When you make a market, if you have a bid, that means you absolutely have an offer available and vice versa. Yeah. And the fact that these computers are not, the AI is not allowed, they, they're not in those same restrictions. They are just going one direction off of one word from Jay Powell or President Trump right. or whomever. Yeah. It's one word and that's all they need and pop, 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 pop. And then that's when you get these just crazy moves. And yeah. I. You brought up, well, what do we think going forward? I would think that um, there's enough going on in the world, and we've got a pretty interesting guy sitting in the White House who, in terms of how he communicates. And because of that, um, I think that no matter who it is going forward, because of the social world that we live in and everything else, I think it's we're, we are in a more volatile space. Yeah. Now, I say that on a day where we're seeing volatility actually has come down to a reasonable level these days, but um, I've you know, always lived by the thing. John has too, the, the old uh, adage that, you know, you buy when you can, not when you have to. Mm -hmm. So there are times to protect yourself. And then there are times where you can let some of that go. And exactly. I just think the range is different than it was. Like you mentioned, there was an eight to 10, maybe even call it a eight to 12 range for quite some time. Yeah. And now, now I feel like we're probably in a different range. Yeah. And it's, it's probably something closer to a 12 to 16 under normal circumstances, but we can very easily get right back to 22, 24, 25. Um, if enough different pieces of the puzzle come out 
I couldn't agree more. I couldn't <laughs> we could agree more. Be 25. I couldn't yeah. agree more. And I'd love to speak a little bit. Um, you said I don't want to demonize the high frequency traders. I want to demonize them a little bit. Okay. Okay. I want to Go demonize them a little bit because, yeah. like, uh, you know, like you guys, I came from a market where they did not exist and yeah. trades were consummated by looking each other in the eye and counting the badge number and looking at the time on the clock. Yep. And then those were all cleared. Now we've created uh, quite a bit of a free for all situation. And like you guys say, I mean, you clearly have the same acts that I do, and that is. What is the disconnect between the SEC not noticing the distortions that they create, not noticing the underlying danger of having derivatives built on derivatives built on derivatives? <laughs> and you, you and I, you guys and I both know that we're probably in for a day of reckoning at some point, you know what I mean, with those uh, products being stacked on top of each other. What is the disconnect with the SEC? Do you think that they're just happy to see the volume trading? Do you think that uh, uh, they're looking the other way on, on a set of high frequency funds that they don't want to investigate? Or what do you think the disconnect is? Can you speak to that at all? I think it's that uh, they don't fully understand it. Right. Um, I, I think that uh, they try to look at things, you know, after an event happens, you know, like we all would. I'm Forensics. not saying, you know, that I have this clairvoyance and I can see out into the future, but they're always, you know, what do they say, fighting the last war. Um, so that's what they're looking at. So in the case of, you uh, uh, the flash crash in 2011, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, it did exactly what we said. The algos were lower, withdrawing uh, liquidity right when you needed it and lowering prices. And when they all do it in concert, you know, you get just a, a sharp drop to the downside like we got. And then a very sharp rebound when the money comes back in to cover. And then some of the guys that are late to cover are now short covering and chasing that thing up Right. So you get that incredible V-shaped bottom that you had in 2011. That we just um, saw now. And so they're going to fight that war. They're going to say, okay, well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to put a circuit breaker in. That'll do it. We're going to put a circuit <laughs> breaker in that'll stop if this, the following terms are met. Then we're going to stop. And if it happens within the last half hour of the day, then all bets are off. Right. You know, we'll just let it, I mean. Let it happen, happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I, I mean, without having that clairvoyance that I mentioned, since they lift most of those stops into the last few minutes of trading, I'd say that's when one of the big next things is going to happen. Yeah. So when you replay this, whenever that happens, <laughs> yeah. you'll say, boy, I think John was really right about that. <laughs> yeah. Look at this thing. It, it fell 2,000 points, you know, from 250 to 3 o'clock because there were no... Circuits yeah. to, circuit breakers to stop it. Exactly. Well, we're going to have some sort of crisis because we've got, you know, the growth of passive management has become astronomical. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the biggest funds clearly are owners of the five biggest stocks in the market, the FANG stocks, et cetera. And, you know, my biggest fear is that if they all turn south in one day, you know, in major quantities or in one week, et cetera, and having major magnitude moves lower, then there are going to be a lot of sellers and lower prices are probably going to bring out more sellers. Um, so that's my concern with the markets. Do you guys agree with that? That that's, uh, you know, the passive investing yeah. could be something that The passive leads investing, us yes. My only pushback at all is um, I realize the FANG names um, – really are a lot to do with the market. But I think sometimes we have focused so much on those names and 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 I realize market cap and everything else. That I, I get it. I mean they're 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 huge movers of the S P five hundred and blah blah blah. But um I, I still look at a lot of the other side of well there are Microsofts out there, there are Oracles out there, there's Intel's out there, and there's and all kinds of different industrial stuff. I mean, so I, I oftentimes have pushed back at the idea that it's just Fang. I, I I get it, I, I totally get it, but I think underneath that level of Fang, there are there are some great support areas. Yeah. And and I that I I think there are many companies that are just still overlooked that they do have their moments where they're gonna have a six month run that everybody's like, oh my goodness, have you seen this? And you know, right now we're sitting in the middle of one of those where everybody is still focused still, I think, on the fangs. But if you look at old tech right now, I, I just came up with, I think, 15 different tech names that are up over 20 plus percent this year alone. Yeah. So, and, and none of those are fang. Right. So, so I think that part of it is what's, what's interesting is, you know, that, that, that fang gets a lot of uh, the publicity and they, sh they should because of what has happened and how big of a portion they are, but there's other stuff out there. There's other drivers. So I th yeah, I 100%. think there's a little bit more of a broad 
movement out there than than gets credit for. I mean, biotech's had a great run, and nobody's even talking about it. Right yeah, now. true. They have had a great couple of weeks. I mean, it's true. it's interesting how there's, and, and I think that's the market that we've been in for probably what two years. This rotational market where who's leading, who's going to bring us next? Yeah, I mean, pharma point. names, Merck's hitting new highs, Lilly's hitting new highs, and nobody talks, and nobody. You know, you look at TV, you won't see it talked about. It's yeah. not talked about because everybody said, hey, did you see Facebook? Right. <laughs> and the latest thing, the investigation or whatever right. it might be that day, right. Apple, Tim Cook, whatever it is. Yeah. But uh, there's a lot going on in other places. 